Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminal Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, autumnal horror, I'm doing a review of Harvest Home by Thomas Tryon. So I read this book for Kelly Hooked on Books' From Hell Book Club, uh, and it was an interesting read. It's one of those books uh, that I've been aware of for ages and have meant to read for ages. And indeed, I had a paperback copy of it um, back in my late teens, I think, um, but never actually got to it for whatever reason. No, there's not enough time, is there, sometimes? Um, so yeah, had never read it, um, but was always intrigued by it and had heard pretty good things about it. Um, so it's quite old. So it's written in 1973, um, which incidentally is the same year that the film The Wicker Man came out. And it definitely bears some similarities to The Wicker Man. Um, so like that film, um, it's about um, people from kind of like the, the city, if you like, who go to a rural setting where there is, you know, kind of weird folklore stuff going on. Um, so in this book, um, the main character and indeed the narrator um, is a guy who's an artist who moves from the city with his wife and young son um, to this uh, small town in New England, um, where which is you know kind of part of a rural community, um, and where r right from the off something feels strange about the town. So the people are all a bit weird and kind of um, you know there's a really dated feel to it. To it, it feels cut off from the 20th century somehow. Um, and there are strange traditions um, that the townspeople have, uh, particularly around the harvest. Um, and it, the, the whole book builds up to this event called Harvest Home, which is kind of a celebration um, of the harvest. And there's like a cycle to it as well, where every, so they celebrate it every year in the, in the, in the village, but the seventh, um, the seventh year is like an extra special one. Um, and the hero of the book, kind of gradually gets more and more intrigued by what's going on, by kind of the folklore and things like that surrounding uh, surrounding the, the rural community in the village. Um, but also by the fact that there's this grave in the churchyard, uh, which is very deliberately set away from the rest of the graves. So the grave of a young woman. Um, and he becomes fascinated by this young woman and tries to find out what happened to her. Um, so you've got kind of the, the the elements of kind of mystery and horror there um, right from the start. So you've got this this sense of eeriness about the town, this sense that there's something not quite right there. Um, and then this mystery about what's happened to this, this young woman as well. And then as the book progresses, he witnesses a few, you know, kind of particularly peculiar things. And I won't go into the detail of what those are, but there are some scenes which are um, because... A lot of the book is is quite gentle and, you know, it's got this kind of um, kind of almost pastoral feeling of, you know, kind of the, the farmland and things like that around them and the, the dated feel of, of the way the people in the town behave. So it's got almost quite a gentle, relaxing feel as the tension and the mystery kind of gradually ramps up. And then every so often you get these quite shocking scenes of, of kind of graphic violence, um, which are really jarring, but in a good way. Um, so I quite enjoyed that mix of, of kind of two different styles of horror um, as the book pro progresses. Um, where it falls down, so, so it's, it's an entertaining book, it's well written, um, he is an interesting narrator um, and it definitely plays into that kind of feeling that was very prevalent in um, 70s horror in the States in particular of the kind of clash between um, you know rural and urban environments. So you see a lot of movies from the from the 70s um, are about that. So things like Deliverance, like The Hills Have Eyes. It's a really common theme in American horror at the time. And you definitely see it played out here. Um, where the book falls down is, um, and this is a personal opinion, you know, other people may not find this a problem about the book, but it, it did become problematic for me, is that the, the, the women in the book become very much kind of demonised as the story progresses. So there's two women in particular, one of whom is kind of an, uh, an elderly woman um, in, the, in the village who everybody kind of looks to for guidance on things and, and is a bit of kind of a faith healer and things as well. And she becomes a darker and darker character as the book pro pro progresses. And then there's a younger woman as well who's a kind of a bit of a seductress. 
Um, and you get you get kind of these two different cliched sides of um, you know the kind of depiction of of women in in horror in particular. So the kind of the old crone um, and the succubus, um, and it just felt really overdone. Um, there's also a kind of very rapey scene, um, which was I was very uncomfortable with. Um, and yeah, it really feels like, you know, as the book goes on and on and on, it feels more and more like a battle between men and women um, rather than a battle between rural and urban. Um, so, you know, th- there were a lot of things I liked about the book. Um, it was eerie at times. It was shocking at times. Um, it, ke- it certainly kept me reading. Um, but yeah, it, it was, you know, it was definitely problematic and definitely felt like it was from its time. Um, so, you know, you think about the early 70s, that really is when the women's liberation movement, you know, was really gaining momentum. And it feels it feels like Thomas Tryon felt threatened by that and has written this this horror novel about how terrible women are um, as, a, as a response to feminism. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it definitely it definitely had some problems, but there was quite a lot to enjoy there as well. OK, time for a random book from the shelves. Um, so this is something very different from Harvest Time, but it's something that since I uh, did my shelf tour and since these shelves have been in the background, a couple of people have commented on in the comments. Um, so I thought I'd talk, talk about it. I've got a couple of these books. Uh, so this is The Saint by Dan Abnett, which is a uh, part of a series of books written based in the Warhammer 40k universe. So if you don't know, Warhammer is a, like a tabletop um, kind of strategy game um, and there are loads like dozens and dozens of books set in this universe so the, the Warhammer 40k universe is set kind of in a, a far future um, where these kind of space marines go and battle aliens on other planets and stuff like that so this is part of a series called the Gaunt Ghost series there are I don't know how many books in that series but I've got the first three omnibuses so the first one I've got on Kindle and then the second and third omnibuses I've got paperback copies of. And I think they've both got three of the Gaunt's Ghosts. Oh no, this one's got four in. Um, so yeah, it's got four individual novels within it um, about this, this this team of space marines going off and kind of doing ultra-violent war stuff. Um, they're very much, I guess, um, kind of grimdark type books. Um, in their depiction of uh, kind of heroism and things like that. So very bloody, very violent, uh, but quite entertaining. As always, thanks very much for watching. Do let me know um, in the comments if you've read Harvest Home and what you thought of it. Um, As always, there will be a text review of um, the book on my website, criminology.com as well, going up uh, to coincide with this video. Um, So yeah, for all my kind of major reviews of crime and horror stuff from now on, there will be a text review um, on the website as well. So look out for that. Uh, There'll be more details um, of the book there. So things like, you know, page counts and RSBNs and things like that, um, as well as trigger warnings for anybody who wants those. Um, So yeah, look out for, uh, for the text reviews as well. There'll be a link to it in the description for the video. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're really good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.